Praise the Lord. This is your friend Michael Masam once again, and we are beginning our new series today entitled, When the Righteous Cry. You know, the tears of the righteous are very precious to God. And, um, you know, the scripture tells us in Psalms 34, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. And again, the Bible tells us that the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The cry of the righteous is so precious to God. And uh, in as we continue with this series, one of the things that will, will, will come out so clearly we want to know who are the righteous. How do you attain the position of righteousness? Is it by works or is it by faith? Why was Abraham called the father of faith? Why did, the, why did God reckon to him as righteousness? Genesis chapter, chapter 15 and verse 6 tells us, that Abraham believed in God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So faith made Abraham righteous. And uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Christ took away my sin. He became my sin and your sin. And in exchange, through the divine exchange, he gave you his righteousness. So today you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you are the righteous of God. And I just want you to think of some of the promises that God has given to the righteous people. One of them is huh, that you know David as an old man putting his walking staff on his chin, he says, My son, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen a righteous man for second, nor his descendants begging for bread. I want to speak to you, widow. I want to speak to you, widower. I want to speak to you whose business collapsed. I want to speak to you whose investment has been destroyed. I want to speak to you that has uh, uh, fallen into bankruptcy. I want to speak to you whose business has collapsed. I want to speak to you who has lost their job. Just because you are the righteousness of God, because you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have put your faith in God. I can assure you, and I speak this without any shadow of variableness. I have no fear of contradiction. God will never forsake you and your descendants will never beg for bread. Bread shall be so abundant in your household that your children will never know poverty. They will not, never know lack because of righteousness. So I just want to encourage you, don't lose your faith because faith is the one that declares you righteous and being declared righteous enables you to connect into the graces of God and from the graces of God, you begin to live a supernatural life, an abundant life that cannot even be explained. How God will touch people's hearts to bring you food. I mean, I have uh, visited uh, orphanages and sometimes we go to an orphanage and they did not have a meal for that day. We go to an orphanage and they did not have soap at all. They didn't know what they are going to do. Sometimes I have sent money to people in the, mid in, in the middle of the night and the Lord just told me, do that. And I'm doing it to the righteous of God. During COVID, 
I was preaching and the Lord tells me, send this money now to this minister of the gospel. And I sent the money and the man of God had his vehicle in the garage and he did not have the money. They were asking for this specific amount of money and he did have it. He was wondering what on earth was going to happen to his vehicle and the Lord tells me, send the money. I did not send the money because the man called me. He did not manipulate me. In, the, in fact, it had taken me about two years without meeting this brother, but the Lord tells me, send him the money. When that man received that money, what do you think that spoke to him? The Lord did that because that man is a righteous man of God. He's a wonderful brother. He's a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, God has spoken to us to send money to, to, offer, to widows and widowers or to, any, to some other people. So, sometimes God has told me to send money to people who are working class. And you know, in your mind, it's like, how, Lord? Only to discover that particular brother or that particular sister, at that moment, they were at their lowest. And because they're the righteous of God, they are in the plan of God and God will provide. I have experienced provision from the Lord. God says, I will never let, you know, I mean, David says, son, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen a righteous man for second. I have never seen a righteous man and his children begging for bread. <clears throat> so this is a very important thing. Now, right now, I want us to turn into the book of Exodus chapter 2, and we are going to read from verse 23. Now, this talks about a people called the Hebrew people, the descendants of Abraham. These guys were, uh, went into Egypt during the famine when Joseph was the prime minister and minister for economic planning in Egypt for food. And they were given very fertile land. And they became very fertile themselves. They, they grew up in numbers. And, and when the king who knew them died, the other kings considered them illegal immigrants. And they, they, were, they were very upset because these people were, you know, giving birth. They were reproducing at a very high speed. And I have traveled a number of countries, and even here in my country, Kenya, we have some people who have come, could be people have come from Somalia, people have come from Burundi or from another country, and they are in the country. And you will find the, 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 the locals of the country saying, these people are, their, their population is growing so big, they are going to take over our country. That is exactly what Israel went through in Egypt. And so sometimes it's very careful. You should be very careful when you try to brand the nationals of another country who have come to your country and try always calling them illegal immigrants, baptizing them terrible names. You don't know why they are there. I want you to know that God, nothing happens under the sun that God doesn't know. That's just something that you need to be very careful, lest you, you just operate in the spirit of the king that did not know the Hebrew people. Now, let me read. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up to God by reason of their bondage. And God had their groaning. And remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Now, I just want to outline a few things, and, and we, we finish today. Number one, when the king who knew the, the, the Hebrew people died, the king of Egypt who died, who knew the Hebrew died, uh, people died, the other king growing up hating the children of Israel because they were prosperous, because they were industrious in Egypt, they were creating wealth and they had become mighty in wealth. They conspired, one, 
to make sure that they kill their children. They kill the seed of Israel. That is the male child. The male child has always been this, the, the main focus of the devil to attack throughout history. You remember even the days of Jesus when Jesus was born? Whom did the, the, whom did the king or Herod want to be killed? It was the male child. When Moses was, was born, who was supposed to be, who, who were being killed in, in, in Egypt? The male Hebrew boys. That, it, is, it is something. A male child is the target of the enemy. And that's why, Ma, that's why my, my brother, you need to pray for your children. Sometimes the things that the ch your children are going through, they, your children have got absolutely nothing to do with what they are going through. It is the attack of the enemy because the devil wants to destroy your seed so that there is no name after you. So the children of Israel cried to the Lord, and the Bible says, and their cry came up to God. So when the righteous cry, their cry ascends to God. That's number one. So I want you to know that your cry has been heard by the Lord. It has gone before the Lord. He has heard your cry. That's number one. And God had their crowning. So your cry has not only ascended to God, but God has heard it. That's number two. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whenever you cry, for example, if you are crying because of your sickness, God remembers his covenant with you, which he saith, if you will walk in my statutes and keep my ways, I will not put on you the diseases that I put on the Egyptians because I am the Lord that healeth thee. That is his covenant. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. He sent his word and his, his word healed them from their destructions. The Bible tells us so. Psalm, uh, Psalm, 107, Psalm, Psalm 107 verse 19 and 20. And they cried out to the Lord and he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from their destruction. So what, what normally happens when people cry out to the Lord? God will send his word. Like this morning, this is not just another broadcast. It is the word of God speaking to your condition. God is speaking to you. He's telling you, son, I know you are, your tears. I know your travails, travails. I know you are pain and I'm willing to help you. So their cry came up to the Lord. And then verse 25, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God took notice of them. So I just want you to know that God has re recorded in, among the to do things, the things in the the list, the to do uh, to uh, to do list of God today is to fix your problem. Does that does that give you hope? The things that God must do today, one of those things is to come through for you. You are so precious to the Lord. Now, let me recap. When they cried to the Lord, how do they cry? In prayer. How do we cry? We cry to God in prayer. And when we cry, our, our, our cry ascends to God. And when it ascends to God, he hears our cry. And when he hears our cry, do you know what he does? He remembers his covenant. If your problem is finances, he is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He owns all the silver and all the gold. Cattle on a thousand hill belong to God. He remembers his covenant to heal you. His covenant to supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He remembers his covenant to heal you of all your diseases and of all your infirmities. If you are surrounded by the enemy and that it's like all people around you, they are just filled with demons to crush you and to do this, the Lord will say, yes, your enemies will come against you from, I mean, in one accord, 
They will all gather together to come against you, but God will dispatch them in seven directions. You are about to see the spectacle of your life. You are going to see something, how your enemies are going to be confused, how they are going to be exposed, how they are going to be defeated before your eyes. That is the covenant of God in regard to you. You are so special to God. That's why Jesus died on the cross for you. I want to encourage you to remain steadfast, to make sure that you continue listening to this broadcast. I pray the blessing of God over your life and I just declare the hand of the Lord over your life. May the Lord hear your cry today. May the Lord remember his covenant toward you and may the Lord come through for you to the glory and honor of his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.